I dream a world where man, no other man will scorn, where love will bless the earth and peace its paths adorn. I dream a world where all will know sweet freedom's way, where greed no longer saps the soul, nor avarice blights our day. A world I dream where black or white, whatever race you be, will share the bounties of the earth and every man is free, and joy like a pearl, attains the needs of all mankind, of such I dream my world. Wasn't that the heaven of freedom that was envisioned 75 years ago, where our minds would be free, our heads held high? Our good wishes to all of you for the 75th year of Indian independence. May this year not only be a happy one, but also one of introspection, one where we look back and look ahead, but most importantly, look at where we stand today. Looking at today, we see ourselves having come a long way from where we began and our journey of progress will continue forever and beyond. Looking at today, we can't help but think of this invisible enemy which has mired our lives with problems and never thought we would learn. We have learned that we are vulnerable and we cannot pride ourselves of being in control. We've also been reminded of something we had perhaps not paid much attention to. Did we forget what freedom really means? Freedom is nothing but the ability to do right. It is nothing but a chance to be better. Freedom comes with responsibility and equality is everyone's responsibility. Today, some of us of class 12 have gathered together to discuss if the invisible threat that we face can be considered as an equalizer or not. To begin with, I'd like to ask Nandini Acharya that if she believes that in addition to teaching us to be grateful, the last many months have taught us that when it comes to an external threat, we are all equally susceptible or not. Nandini, on to you. Yes, sir. Um, I do believe that uh, with this threat, um, we are all equally susceptible to it. When there is a greater threat over us and our survival is at risk, that's when we choose to come together because uh, that option allows us the highest chances of survival. When there is an unknown threat like COVID, for example, fear acts as a uniting force. The fear of being overpowered by this great unknown threat, it's what drives us to uh, fight together and come together. Uh, speaking from my own personal experience, my brother and I, we would always find a way to fight each other when we were younger. And uh, if ever a mom wasn't around and we damaged something in the house, we'd put our heads together and find a way to hide it because we were so scared of being scolded by a mother. So that fear of punishment uh, that would bring us together in that situation. Now, Nandini, if I may interrupt, why is there a disparity otherwise? Uh, that's right. Uh, there is a disparity under normal circumstances because uh, we're not always united. We see that in our daily lives, we do what we think will uh, benefit us the most. It's like Napoleon said. Men can be moved by only two mechanisms, fear and self-interest. Take the case of COVID itself. As long as uh, the solution to this virus was unknown, we were all united. But as soon as the vaccine came out, this unity was gone for the most part. The economically fortunate, uh, they got themselves vaccinated while the government was left to fend for the poor. But of course, that does not mean that this self-interest it's a wrong thing or it is bad for the society and it should definitely not be equated with being selfish. Many people, they help others and uh, not because they uh, get something in return. So uh, I believe that it is the self-interest that can also help others, but at the same time, it also causes us to have different opinions and choose different paths. And eventually there are conflicts and disparity. 
definitely we do have a lot of reasons to why disparities still exist in today's times but didn't we have these disparities in the past times as well but coming together without arms could help us attain freedom so don't you think coming together as equals help us overcome any threat samriddhi why don't you help us with this yes i definitely believe that approaching the situation uh, equally helps us keep external threats and adversities under control to some extent if not completely like nandini here just mentioned uh, under a greater and unknown threat people automatically come together and i agree with that completely because people will have the differences in views and opinions and their mindset also to some extent but uh, but say for instance uh, keeping this current pandemic situation as an example um i am following the necessary precautions of social distancing and all and my neighbor also sees the same and they also do it and then slowly society as a whole follows it of course you can say there will be exceptions rebels who won't do the same but keeping them aside if as a whole everyone comes together then i don't see any reason why we can't build a forefront against this particular obstacle and not only equality here but i think towards this equality uh factors about a person's self discipline and self improvement also play a role here as i believe in the well known quote united we stand divided we fall so hence to conclude yes I do believe, in my opinion, that coming together as equals definitely helps us overcome external threats. Now, if I were to derive the next question from uh, unity in particular, I'd like to ask Shreya Gupta: uh, Why is there inequality? Why does it exist? Why is it so difficult to treat everyone equally? Well. Uh, equality is about ensuring everyone is treated the same despite all the diversity or in other words i would say it's providing identical treatment for all people in all given situations personally i don't believe that the premise of treating all people equally is an absolute each person is equally entitled to life and liberty and opportunity to peaceably enjoy their life even if there exists mental social physical or economical differences by birth we're all same spiritually as individuals on the other hand if i may say for instance uh when hiring people for a job each person must have a fair and equal opportunity so as to provide for themselves and their family but not every person would be physically or mentally capable of performing every job which means that some people would need to be treated differently similarly if i may say in the case of criminal offenses the complaints would have to be resolved fairly in every situation if i were to respond to a complaint where the subject had diminished mental capacity the approach to administering my duties would be slightly different than if the person was fully aware of his actions being criminal okay but you know whenever we talk about equality we also have this concept of freedom that comes into play many a times so khushi how do you feel about freedom and equality being mutually exclusive um thank you sadhvi for the question i think yes equality and freedom are mutually exclusive you see in democracies it is common to think uh, of freedom and equality as essentially synonymous surely there are both core values that must both be upheld in order to have any semblance of democracy in fact i think the opposite ends up being true equality and freedom are directly opposed so the more you have of one the less you have of the other i think a misunderstanding of how equality and freedom relate stems from a misunderstanding of the process of evolution if we were all truly born equal then there would be no evolution so we are all uh, in fact born unique with different amounts and types of intelligence attractiveness and a range of other physical and mental qualities naturally these differences lead some to have natural advantages over others these variations and differences are necessary for the process of evolution and natural selection to work so well, thank you kushi that was beautifully put uh, now my next question is for uh, anshuta Now, Ansh, how far do you think that putting restrictions on freedom for common good is 
being accepted by people. Um, I strongly believe that putting restrictions on people's freedom for common good will not be accepted by a vast majority of the population. Uh, in some cases, they might even turn rebellious. Uh, for example, like during this pandemic situation, we find a large number of people not uh, following the rules and regulations given by the government, COVID protocol, and, being, and ignoring them. So this has further worsened the situation. Uh, Ansh, I do have a counter question for you. Uh, so you're implying that personal well-being warrants the expense of freedom, is it? Yes, I believe it does. Uh, like I believe in the law of equivalent exchange, according to which uh, in order to gain something, something of equal value must be lost. For example, like if I want myself as well as my loved ones to be healthy during this pandemic situation, then I need to give up my freedom of movement. Thank Ansh, you so that much. was so well said. Um, I actually kind of realized a lot of you have a totally different interpretation of what freedom is. I would personally love to know what your concept of freedom is. So, Shreya, why don't we start with you? Uh, well, freedom for me on personal grounds, if you ask, would be to be able to choose between anything and everything and also to take decisions which affect me personally in a right way so that they're good for me. Okay, and what about Kushi? Um, I think uh, it, freedom is about having opportunities and being able to seize them, truly being yourself wholeheartedly and as Shreya said, able to make your own decisions, but keeping in mind that your freedom shouldn't be at cost of others' freedom and their sentiment. Okay. Samriti, how do you feel about this? Nothing particularly unique, but uh, to me, my uh, freedom would be to be able to express my own opinions without getting judgment from at least my own family and the people who are close to me. Like, as someone who who really struggles to express myself, at least I would want that, uh, you know, they don't judge me just uh, immediately after they hear some something. And I don't want unlimited freedom on this aspect. To some extent, uh, it should be limited because I might end up misusing it. But yes, for now, I just, I would like that kind of a freedom where I would be able to express myself freely. Nandini, uh, Nandini, what about you? Uh, freedom of which essence appeals to you the most? I think uh, true freedom is something which can be achieved. Uh, freedom is a changing concept, according to me. It keeps on evolving. When I was a kid, uh, freedom for me was being able to watch TV till late at night, not having to go to school every day. Um, but now that I've grown up a little and my perspective has changed. So now I agree with the others. Uh, freedom to be able to express myself and um, not being judged by others not having anyone else's expectations forced upon me. But uh, will this stay the same when I grow up? I do not think so. Um, as we keep on changing, so does our concept of freedom. When we are free from one restraint, we see that we are bound by something else. It is really hard to satisfy humans after the world. So um, complete freedom uh, can never be achieved. Ansh, would you like to add to that? Uh, freedom for my childhood side would be to be able to do go for swimming every time I want to. But on a serious note, um, freedom for me is to be able to pursue my own form of happiness without uh, being held back by the chains of expectations and stereotypes. I also strongly believe that in order to uh, I want, that we should be able to use our creativity to expand the ability, expand the boundaries of what we can do and what we wish to do without being held back by the limitations set by society. Thank you so much, Anj. Now, as we near the completion of this discussion, I think it is safe to assume that there are as many definitions of freedom as there are people on the planet. Now, a little over 6 billion permutations, that is. Some were of the opinion that freedom is completely circumstantial while Others thought of it to be nothing short of a phantasm. Some even thought it was a utopian vision. Now, all I can say is that 
we'll be here forever if we were to keep discussing this notion of freedom and it will never end this discussion that is i think it will be prudent that we end the discussion here uh, sadvi would you like to take over yeah sure so our prayer to the almighty may each of our countrymen be granted freedom to give freedom to live freedom to question why freedom to speak freedom to seek freedom to laugh or to cry freedom to be freedom to see freedom to aspire so high freedom that's mine freedom divine freedom no money can buy